All right, what is up my homies? Welcome to Brain Melt University. Today we are going to be talking all about classful versus classless networking. This is going to be our final video in the series for IP addressing. As usual, we're going to be discussing the what's, the why's, and the how's. What it is, how it works, and why we use it. Let's get started. When we first started IP addressing, we decided we were going to go with something called classful networking. This was basically where we had set sizes of computer networks and a set number of devices that could fit on each of those networks. With any IP address, whether we're discussing IP version 4 or IP version 6, we have two halves of that IP address. This IP address has a network portion and a host portion. The network portion identifies which network that particular device lives on. The host portion uniquely identifies that device on that network. With classful addressing, we had the situation where we had a specific number of networks and a specific number of hosts per network. So say for instance, we're taking a class C IPv4 address. We have a subnet mask with that class C address that is 22550.0, meaning that the first 24 bits are turned on. This means that the first 24 bits identify the network and the remaining eight bits identify the device on that network. It's really that easy. So for a class B, it's a double 255.00, the exact same number of networks for the exact same number of hosts per network. Now this creates a lot of waste with IP addressing because you might not need all 16 host bits with a class B IP address. You might only need to be able to fit, say for instance, 60 devices. So if you have six host bits, this gives you two to the power of six total number of permutations. So if you subtract the very first IP address in that network, which is just the network address, and you don't use the last address on that network because that's reserved for broadcast messaging, then you're left with 62 available host addresses. This means that two to the power of six will get the job done. But classful addressing doesn't take this into account. It doesn't recognize that you might only need 60 devices worth of space, so it gives you 65,536 devices with a class B address because you have 16 full bits or two to the power of 16. This is a very inefficient way to use IP addressing, especially when the internet exploded into general use the way that it has today. So we needed a way to create a stopgap measure to make IP version four last as long as possible. And we also wanted IP version six to last as long as possible without having to go through a major rewrite of how it works. So we came up with this idea of classless interdomain routing, CIDR. The way CIDR works is you get to specifically select how many bits in a IP version four address or IP version six are going to be used for the network identifier and how many are going to be used for the host identifier. So in our previous example where we had a class B IP address, we only need six host bits. So 32 minus six is 26. So if we only need six host bits, that means that 26 of our bits can be used for the network identifier instead. So we can shrink that network down to where instead of allowing 65,534 valid hosts, so your valid hosts plus your network and your broadcast, we can instead only allow 62 devices plus your network and broadcast for a total network size of 64. This idea is called subnetting. This also allows us to create several smaller networks. So just because we decided we didn't want to use that total class B address space, doesn't mean that we just sacrifice all of that extra address. We actually have created a lot of individual networks. So if we have a class B IP address, and we decide to subnet down to using 26 bits, we are essentially borrowing 10 bits so that we can create two to the power of 10 number of unique networks out of this particular address space. So two to the power of 10 is 1024. This means we've created 1024 identically sized networks that can each support 62 devices. Now you can play around with this address space and combine several or shrink several even further. 
So then that way you can make several networks. Maybe you need one network that can handle 1,022 devices, or you might need three networks that only need to support two because they're a connection between two routers or something like that. You can shrink that all the way down to a slash 30, meaning that you're only using two host bits, giving you two to the power of two number of permutations, but you're not allowed to use the network or the broadcast. So you actually only have two valid host addresses out of a slash 30, meaning router one has an address and router two has an address. So that is classless networking. IP version six works on a classless principle in the first place. There is no actual class of IP version six address. So we don't have class A, Bs or Cs. Instead, they decided they were going to go with CIDR notation from the beginning. So there is no subnet mask with IP version six. Instead, we just say how many bits in that IP version six address are being used for network. In IP version six, there are two components of the network portion. There is the global prefix and there is the subnet identifier. So when you combine these two, this becomes your network portion of your IP version six address. Now, normally we just go ahead and stick with a slash 64. Otherwise you start to run into some problems with protocols like DHCP. However, if you're okay with playing around with static IP addressing, you can actually go well beyond the first four hex tets in an IP version six address, and you can subnet all the way down to say a slash 124 to get 16 possibilities. With IP version six, you no longer have the required broadcast and network address space. So, so you're allowed to use that entire address block for your network, though it does bear mentioning that the first address in any IPv6 network is reserved for any cast addressing. Basically, it is a first responder type of address where multiple devices doing the same function might have the same IP address. So the first one that gets it makes the response and it doesn't pass it on to the next device who might also wanna to respond to it. This address can be used as an Anycast address. You just have to be careful not to hand out this exact same address to other devices, otherwise they think it's an Anycast. So that is classful versus classless IP addressing. If you would like to discuss subnetting more in depth, I'd be more than happy to make a video. Just drop your request in the comments down below and we'll go ahead and see you next time here on BrainMelt University. Go ahead and like, subscribe, share this with your friends if they're struggling with classful versus classless networking. This has been great. Next, we're gonna be moving on to more general ideas like the OSI model and the TCP model. Keep it real, guys. We'll see you next time at BrainMelt University.